Hello, this video is about the recent DCC installation and detailing of my 1980s LGB 2071D logo. It's not a step-by-step -step how to as that would be days, but it shows some of the issues and steps and setbacks and decisions that I made along the way. Hopefully it's interesting to you if you're doing something similar or working on LGB. I'll make it in two parts due to the length of the information, but hopefully it's of some use to you. Okay, here's the model as I started. Let's begin. Hello everyone who's interested in LGB and DCC. Uh, my name's Richard and this is my first video for YouTube. I'm just going to show you how I went about the conversion of my old 2071D, that's the uh, Zillatal U43 062 loco. And uh, I bought this some years ago, but it's a uh, mid 1980s model, so it's 35 years old now or something of that order. And uh, I bought it second hand, obviously, and uh, it's had a few things needed doing, and I wanted to convert to DCC to give it sound as well. So here's my 2071 on the workbench. Uh, excuse the clutter in the background. I'm not taking a lot of uh, prettiness with this video. Uh, what I want to do is to show you how I convert to DCC and add on some new functions and sound, install the speakers and so forth and also made a few mods which are my personal preference so uh, not necessarily authentic or prototypical but what I like to have on my models here in Australia now, the just showing you some of the differences so you can see what might be on your model uh, doesn't matter there's many different versions of this model over the years also as this one was 30 years old when I got it there's a few things missing which I'll quickly cover uh, missing or different unusually this model has the toolbox on the front tank that's a it is a uh, standard fitting, but not many of the models that you buy come with that. The cover off the coal bunker there is, is missing. The little steam pipe there, I think that's to do with the safety valve. That was painted as a gold colour, which really jarred to me, and I've painted that silver or aluminium, just to blend that in a bit. Uh, the whistle and all the fireman's tools on the roof are missing. There's no crewman there. And the chimney seems to be off an earlier uh, version, the green Eurovapor version of this model. This should have the diamond smokestack, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, the headlights at the front don't have the gold rings around them, which I don't want anyway, so that's that's fine. Um, what else is there? That's about it. Red wheels, black underframe, so red lining. Shows number three on the cab. Some had were two and some were three. There are about 15 different versions of this. Um, I'm going to try and change that to a 2 because I've already got number 3 on one of my other locos, so I'm not sure about that. Uh, you notice this one has is the model without the coal bunker at the back, so that's which is the earlier one. And I've already started making some mods. I've put a headlight on the rear of the loco in Australia. All engines have a headlight on the back when they're going in reverse, and especially for tank engines. 
need to be able to go in reverse. So that's about it. Um, one of the handrails is broken there. I've got to get a new one for that. And a handrail missing there. So there are a few little bits and pieces that I'm going to do. Another one there's a little fitting there, a little square hole just next to the chimney. The, uh, there used to be, a, well some models had a dynamo there, so I've got another dynamo fitting to go on there. You can see I've done a bit of paintwork on the, on the lines there. First, uh, first coat. Uh, I like to do that, add a bit of detail onto the model. So not everyone's preference, and the model didn't come with that, but that's why I'm going to do it. Uh, all the running gear seems to be pretty standard. That's all, all there working. Loco runs quite well, so it's a matter of getting DCC in. So first of all, I'll show you briefly disassembly, and then we'll look inside and see what the space is there and what we can do with it. When I first saw this I thought, oh there's heaps of room in that in that tank, the boiler and the two side tanks, be plenty of space, but uh, doesn't seem to be how that's going to work out. Anyway, we'll open it up and have a look. Okay, so now we'll start to disassemble the logo so we can see in See what we've got space inside to work with. Now I must admit I've cheated a little because I've already done it and so I'm just going to run it through. I'm not actually going to demonstrate the whole thing. Now down here on the back buffer beam or where the buffer beam would be there's two uh, slot headed screws. All screws on this logo are slots. There's no Phillips head or crosshead screws, I don't know if they were not invented then. Certainly no concept of DCC ready in this engine, so we'll see there's a lot of work to strip everything out that's not needed. Anyway, and take those two screws out there, one on each side, and then the cab lifts up, just like that, and it comes out from the behind the, there's a, a tab on the front and that will help if we take this uh, steam pipe off first yep so that just undoes from the three pieces put it in the box and then the, the cab comes off like that so it just hooks on the front with those lugs there into the firewall And when that comes off, there's this piece here, also comes out from the screw when, when you unscrew it. And that forms part of the back of the cab. Now, in the original model, the, uh, it's got these three brass buses which run right through the locomotive with track power, and which runs to the motor obviously, and the third one has uh, is usually for the lights and so on and there's a capacitor in there so you need this piece but we won't need the uh, copper uh, brass strips anymore which I've removed so I'll show I'll put some photos on showing all those but the you see there the uh, back of the cab and I've given some of the pipe work a bit of a touch of paint a bit of brass paint and, and so on there. Originally that's all black apart from the white gauges. And also in the fire box door I've put two LEDs. One's going to be yellow for flickering firebox effect and the other one is white which is going to simulate when the fire door is open and the shoveling is happening and you get a bright white light on there. 
I'm going to put a touch of yellow paint on that to give it a yellow tinge, but it's quite white. Uh, the back of the cab, we've got the normal fittings there, a little bit of paint on the pipework. Uh, there's the uh, power supply, which you can run through to the train if you like, and the lights on the back. Now these lights are originally the 18 volt incandescent which uh, in my case they're still working fine you could keep those if you like they're 18 volts so fine for um, uh, the uh, DCC I run 18 volts on the track power so that's fine for this uh, but on my engine I'm converted these to LEDs which are bicolor red and white so when the uh, like it's running forward, these rear lights will show red, like a red oil lamp. And then when we go into reverse, they'll change to white. So that's an effect I like to have on, on mine. Uh, the, now these lamps here, they're a separate piece. You can just see it there. That It's not... It's... Uh, fixes into the back of the cab with two little pins um, and uh, the, lead, the wire for the light comes out of the bottom and goes in through that hole which I can point to with everything being black it's a bit hard to see so the wire comes out there and goes in that hole that's the red, uh, brown and black wires and I've taken those out now you will need to take those out because, which they just pull out like that. And you see the two pins there. Now when you pull those out normally you can. I won't pull them right out now because my wires are in there. But be directly behind the light is two more screws and that screws they screw into the back plate or back panel in the cab which I'll show you here this is like a little toolbox uh, tools and so forth moulded in I've given that a touch of paint so you can actually see the tools now so when you undo those two screws that panel will come out and you'll see the wiring behind there you can see in there a little bit of the brass uh, strips which were in there. So those two strips are there, they're fixed in and they ran down behind that panel which I'm not going to remove because it's glued in. Those strips run all the way down the back of the cab onto the floor and then through those contacts and then across the cab floor up under the boiler. But Seeing we don't want those brass strips which connect the, the track to the motor, we don't want those for DCC, so I've cut them off. And you can see I've started the wiring and I've used these uh, little um, computer board uh, plugs so that I can unplug the cab from the rest of the loco if, when I need to work on it. And I've colour coded the, all the wires under there. So I'll come back to that a little bit later. So I've already made a start on that. Now the next part on dis disassembly is in here in this little box. These boxes beside the, either side of the firebox. Down in there you'll find two more screws. You unscrew those. They go through into the floor of the loco. So undo those and you're almost ready to get the tank off the loco. One thing you will have to do is take off the chimney. So normally with all the LGBs you've got a there's a square nut goes in that socket and the chimney uh, smoke stack screws down into it. This originally is a smoking loco. 
though the smoke's not not working when I got it. And this is the switch here to switch the smoke on and off when you have that fitted. Uh, but that's not, not working on mine, so I'm going to put a new ESU smoke generator in there. So we don't need that. So to un get that out, the nut's fixed, so you need to unscrew the chimney. Now, in my case, the chimney's the chimney comes right off. It's just it's just sitting there. So the chimney, and I'm not using that chimney anyway. And then the uh, smoke generator, LGB smoke generator, comes out. There's not much to it. Uh, that's all that's left of it. So again, I won't need that. Though I'm keeping it in case I need the threaded piece at the bottom. Now the threaded piece at the bottom does a couple of things. Uh, it holds the smoke stacking position, but it also runs through the base of the front coupler, or the hook at least. So that comes out uh, when you take the chimney out. I'm going to put a hook on the front as well as the loop. I think in a tank engine you need to be able to run backwards, so you need a coupling on the front as well. So I'm going to try and put that on, though there's nowhere for it. It's going to be a bit of a bit of a hacking around with the Dremel to get that on there, but we'll see what we can do. And also in there is the uh, the uh, what's called the snow clearer or the, or the cow catcher. I've taken that off already that that goes on the front there and that unscrews with the two screws there. And note that the screws go up through there. I'm going to have to modify that to put the hook coupling on. But that screw goes up there and then secures the top of the cylinder cover. You can just see there that's loose now, but that's screwed by the same screws which hold that on. So we need to keep that in mind and replace those screws later. So with that out of the way, the tank can come off. Just lifts off like that. This still, still image which I took earlier shows the brass strips on the floor of the cab leading up towards the motor block and also the two wires from the track pickups on the trailing truck which we will need to keep. So we don't need the brass strips which you'll see I've removed later but we still need the wire from the trailing truck so they'll need to be taken up onto the towards the motor block and you'll see that in the future slides. This still shows the top of the motor block uh, coming through the floor, uh, which you'll see when the tank lifts off. Uh, the, the motor block comes through and it's got that cover on secured with those four screws, which you'll see. Uh, in the next part of the video, we'll open that up and start the surgery on the motor block. But that's what it looks like when you first see it. This still shows the motor cover removed, which you can see just at the top, and you can see what's inside. You see the motor uh, with the worm gear on each end, but more importantly the brass strips. The ones on the right come from the, the cab, which we saw earlier. Then there's brass strips either side of the motor, and they have strips which run down to connect to the contacts for the the uh, track pickups and the little strip you can see at the left and the yellow wire go to the smoke the old smoke system so just about all of that comes out which we'll see in the next video but that's what it looks like when you open it up right I've just shown you some stills of the interior 
before I started work on it. So uh, you'll see in the full size of the motor block uh, or the top of top cover of it uh, as it sticks up into the boiler space. It's about 11 mil deep, so it takes up quite a bit of the interior of the tank, which uh, the side tanks, uh, the depth of those, after allowing for that thickness, about 29 mil. So you take out 11, there's not a lot of room inside. Anyway, there's four of these little screws holding that top cover in place. And I've got that one out. With one hand, I'll get the tripod for the, the rest of this. So that comes off. So that cover, it's a cover for the motor, but it's also critical because those um, saddles there, hard to see, the U-shaped saddles there, sticking up upside down now, they go down inside the, mo the motor block space and they hold the motor down into position. And if that's not seated, sitting correctly, that would allow the motor to lift up a little bit. So even that much. And that would then allow the worms to jump out of the gears, the idler gears, and you would then have the metal teeth of the worm chewing up the idler gears and uh, ruining your uh, gears on the axles and making a loud noise and the motor not running. So that is critical to keeping the motor secure and that's why I haven't just taken that off. So I've left that and I'm still using that to hold the motor in position. Now you can see here almost, you can see a little bit, this entire body shell now splits in half down the middle. You see now it's along there, that goes right through to the front. So the whole chassis splits in half straight down the middle, which I think is the first version of the um, first style of the motor block in LGB. This is not quite the first because this one at least has this cover. So once you take the cover off, you can take the motor out. Just pulls out. You can take the motor out and you can get some access in there. You could replace the motor. You can grease the, um, the gears. You can just see the worm gears down in there. There's one, one on each end on that beautiful Bueller motor. Uh, so you do have some access, but if you want to do anything more, including the typical um, conversion from two-wire to four-wire motor, you need to, normally, you need to split that in half. Split the whole engine in half by undoing all these screws. There's screws here and here and underneath. But I've chosen not to do that. Because if I do that, I have to take all the, the wheels off and all the gears and the valve gear on that side, on at least one side, if not both. And then you've got to re-quarter the wheels and get it to run smoothly. And I've done it on another loco and I don't want to do it again. So I've managed to do this without taking the wheels off or splitting the block. So I'll try and show you how I did that now. Okay, so now we're getting the motor, the motor out. It does just pull out, though it's a bit, it's quite tight. And I've used a pair of pliers to grab onto the uh, main shaft, and it just pulls up and comes out. Now bear in mind that when you when you do this initially, you won't have all these wires in here. So there's the motor and I've got the orange and grey tabs soldered on there. Sorry that red wire's in the way. <laughs> Confusing matters. Ignore that one. You got the orange and grey wires soldered onto the um, tabs on the motor. 
And normally those tabs, the screwdriver, normally those tabs touch on to two brass strips, one on each side, which go down from the from the top down to the bottom of the motor. And that those I've taken all those off. So here's one here. No. This piece of one here. So that was sold. So I've soldered at the top and that runs down to the bottom. And in fact you can see a bit of wire there on the bottom which connects to the brushes underneath. So looking at it now, you can see the idle gears there for the uh, front axle. This, that's the silver shaft there for the center axle which doesn't have gears. And then the idler gear for the third axle, the rear axle. So each of those have, have brushes on it to pick up the track power. So there's some documentation which says that there's um, two axles have pickups and so forth. But I've found that in this case that all, all the wheels on all the driving wheels on the three axles have um, spring-loaded bushes, uh, brushes, which contact the back of the wheels. Also, I'll mention, we've got the trailing track, of course, on this model. And that has contacts on the back of the wheels. And that the two wires come up from the trailing truck. So all the wheels pick up track power on this loco. And the track power connects to the brass strips which run along the engine um, which will you all have seen in the earlier photo. So you don't need those, you've got to insulate them all from the motor. Now some people just bend the, the two tabs of the motor back, bend them back and solder a wire on, onto those and say it's insulated. But I didn't want to do that. Uh, if those touch, there goes your decoder in a puff of smoke. $400. Well, $400 Australian dollars. So I wanted to cut all that out. So the all the brass strips along there I've, I've cut off um, and I've tried to connect with wires because I need the wires to come out through of the motor block to get to the decoder anyway so I need track power on a wire and uh, so I'm chain connecting all the brushes and track power to wires so starting from the rear I've got the trailing truck Confusingly, in this case, the left-hand wheel is red and of red wire, and the right-hand wheel is blue. But that's just for that. The others are all red and black. Okay, now we've got the uh, top cover of the motor block open or removed. It's just to the side and we've got the motor lifted out from its spot so now I'll show you what I did to convert the motor from two wires or no wires to a four wire connection to allow us to connect the decoder and all the other lights and functions which don't use track power the track power only goes to the decoder and just remembering before um, from the photo there used to be these brass strips which went along the top or well, along the back here and then across the floor of the cab and connected to the brass tabs inside the motor block so that's there of no use because every, no, nothing uses track power anymore and they're just in the way so they've all been removed so the, the conversion taken the motor out and then to uh, one side I've soldered a uh, orange wire and on the other side is the grey wire which is the NRMA standard wiring 
with the shrink wrap over the top of the, the brass tabs and they're bent out of the way so you could just do that and put it back in but then the brass strips would still be live with track power and, and which you don't need all over the place so I wanted to remove those um, the brass tabs down inside the motor block which connect to the brushes and so on and uh, have a red and black wire running from them so it's a bit, bit, of, uh, bit involved but this is what I've done so starting from the back we've got the two wires from the trailing truck uh, in this case the uh, blue wire is on the right hand side and the, the red wire that's the, that's the existing wires on the, on the left hand side so I've unsoldered them from from the brass strips and sold them direct to this rearmost of the brass tabs which are existing tabs and they run down to the uh, brush at the back of the wheels on the rear axle the rear driving axle so those brass tabs there's used to put brass tabs in there and one on each side connecting to everything under there so I've unsoldered those so that's power from the trailing truck then the uh, the rear driving axle there was a brass tab down there which which goes down into the body of the box and that's that's still there so you can't take them out without opening the motor so I cut off the long brass strip across the top and just have got the just the two tabs one on each side which sit in position there and connect with the brush brushes which touch the back of the two wheels on the rear driving axle so to the center axle that's the center axle there that silver bar with with no gears and just forward of that just here on each side there's black plastic sticking out from the side can't quite see the one on this side because of the light there's one on each side and there's a um, brass metal which fits in there and there's the brush on the other end which goes to the back of the wheel on each side and they'll on the existing model well on mine there was wires soldered on to those brass pieces of metal and uh, but they were pretty lightweight and a little bit loose so I've resoldered them red on the right and black on the left and um, connect then I've got the wires which which connect to up through here and then come up and join onto the the tabs there pretty hard to solder down in there it's like doing uh, keyhole surgery but uh, you can manage it and it's certainly a lot better than taking the whole motor apart uh, soldering onto brass lumps of brass is very difficult I find because the brass takes the heat away faster than your soldering iron can supply it so I've used my large soldering iron which I use to do track work uh, that's 80 watts so you've got enough power to do a quick solder um, on a piece of brass so that's the contacts track power from the center axle covered and, and again the wire going over to the to that central point now the front axle there that's the front axle you can see the idler gears there and you can just see the plastic um, saddle which holds the motor and you can see the right in the middle you can see the little slot I'll point to it no. <laughs> you can see the little slot there 
which holds the tab from the motor. There's a little projection on the bottom of the motor and that pops down into that tiny slot and stops the motor turning left or right. And you, So that's got to be engaged of course. So just here um, in this where the gears are there were two brass strips going down for the uh, to connect to the other brushes. No, that's them there. So that's that's the sorry, there were two brass strips which went down and connected to the tabs off the motor. So they're gone, they're not necessary anymore because we've got the wires on. These two brass tabs here, which were sold, soldered to the brass strip that went right along the top of the motor on each side, they're unsoldered and floating inside the motor block there. But again, I've soldered white, uh, red and black wires to them. And those wires um, also come out to the outside wheel. And the other red wire, the same red wire, goes to the back. So they're all connected together. The um, contacts from the front axle, from the centre axle, from the, the rear driving axle, and from the uh, trailing truck all connected together on the, on the left black and on the right red. So that's all all done. Now, as I mentioned on the motor we've got the orange wire and the grey wire. Take the red wire out of the way, it's a bit confusing. They're all a bit tangled up. Okay, there's the motor with the orange and the grey wires. You will notice that the orange wire goes to the black side of the motor. So there's a, there's a black side and a red side on the motor. But with the pin downwards on that side and the positive going to the black, then the then the engine drives forwards, which is standard. So positive on the right, engine goes forward, is NRMA standard. I think LGB is the opposite. So I've soldered the orange wire to the black side of the motor, which is the right hand side of the motor. Now the um, making the space so you can see here now, I've cut back the, not the cover, but this piece underneath. I've cut back about 15mm off there and just pushed those down out of the way. So there was room now for the smoke generator to sit there between the chimney hole and the, and the motor block, or the motor cover. And same at the back here. So here is the back of the uh, where the firewall is, or the uh, back of the cab, the firebox. So the firebox is here, and I've made take about an extra 15, 20 mil here to give room for speakers. Normally, I'd fit a 50 mil speaker, which is about 20 mil. Uh, in depth, but it's just not enough room there, so I'm getting two inch and a quarter speakers, and I'll put one on each side, and I'll have to make a box to, to fit in there. Um, when you see the weights inside the tank, you'll see why it's difficult to move things around and make the space, but we'll show you that now. One bit I didn't show you before was inside the motor block cover. On each side there's this brass strip which runs from the front of the uh, cover to the back, one on each side. And when they close the cover, that presses on the brass strips on the inside and connects the, the two contacts here with the contacts at the back. So unless that's in position, then that 
you're only getting the track power from half the contacts. So that's not going to work with the new arrangement. So the uh, copper strips are, are out. They're not needed. You, you still have... So if they're out, you could probably do away with the cover, but you've still got to have these plastic, uh, the plastic saddle there, which goes down on top of the motor and holds it in position. Just remembering that the on this end of the motor, there's a little pin at the bottom, which goes in a slot at the bottom of the the equivalent saddle underneath. And that stops the motor turning, rotating on its axis. So that's that has to lock in there. And that fits inside and that's connected to the... It's engaged with the, the idler gears. And so there's, that's all the movement that you get. And then this then goes in here once all the wires are out of the way. And that goes down. We've got the leads coming out, that goes down and that locks in position. So you've still got a, quite a bit of space occupied in the, in the tank there, in the boiler, which we need, but it's not as bad as it was, so I haven't had to cut the whole thing off. See, you can't quite cut the whole thing off because the motor sits up proud of the deck. So you've, you've still got that space uh, occupied. Now when you lift up the boiler and tank from the deck of the loco, this is what you see inside. There's three enormous pieces of lead uh, occupying the bulk of the space in the boiler. Don't forget you've got the top of the motor block which runs most of the way along there and is 11 mil high so that takes 11 mil off the space so it takes basically the rest of the space inside the boiler now those pieces of lead uh, this one's 272 grams I weighed and so is that one unscrewed them, they're screwed onto the onto the uh, underneath, underside of the tank with those screws and plastic washers and this one in the centre is 440 gram so it's 980 grams of lead inside the boiler there which gives it, the logo its weight and stability and pulling power so you need that, you can't take that away but it occupies a hell of a lot of space in there. Also in there, there's a little plastic um, piece which is screwed onto screws in the bottom of, well, the underside of the top of the boiler. And that has some wires running to it, uh, which I'll put in a still shot. And that's run, th run th up through here to the two side lights. Um, there was this still shot shows the original wiring inside the tank inside the boiler and it shows the lights uh, the wires which run to the uh, side lights at the two side lights at the front of the tank. Um, there's a capacitor in there and those wires run back to the plastic fitting with the three screws in it which you saw earlier and those screws hang down and contact the brass strips so none of that is needed because I'm changing all the wiring inside in the lights and we don't need the capacitor so all that wiring's come out along with the incandescent bulbs a, a capacitor in there uh, which gives some power to the lights while the uh, uh, when the mode, when the track powers off or crossing dirty track, but we don't need that with DCC and a power pack, so that's all come out. And as I've said, I'm changing the side lights to 
uh, red and white. So that's these lights here, these LEDs with um, three leads. So the centre one's the positive and the slightly longer one is the white and the, the shortest one is the red. So you can use that to have red and white, red or white, um, on, the, on, these, on these lights and I'm putting them on the front as well. If you, if you power both sides at once, you, you just seem to get red, you don't get pink. But uh, I'm not trying to do that anyway. So I've done the rewiring for, the, um, for those two side lights and with the resistors. These are only three, rough, roughly three volts, two to three volts capacity. Don't overdo it when you're testing it all or you blow them like I did one. Um, by the way, these are from DCC Concepts in the UK. Um, fairly unusual, the warm white with the red. So those wires there and the the, that's the back of the two LEDs for the fire door and the fire box light. So that's all in there under the top of the boiler. That's the little terminal for the old wire, which we don't need. So, what are we going to do to get some space with all these weights? What I've decided to do, I'm going to attempt is that this one here I'll leave in place on its mounting and that will run across the top of the motor block and which will still be there. These ones at the front I need room for the smoke generator which needs to sit in there between the chimney just see the hole going through where the chimney used to be and the other weight. So we need 40 mil, roughly, and you've got to allow a bit of room for this um, circular piece here, which is the back of the firebox detail, which I'll show you later if you haven't seen that. So what I'm going to do with these weights, and cut them, cut them in half down the middle, down this way, and I'll put one on each side. Um, and glue them to the side of the tank there, one on one side and one on the other, like that. So that will keep the same amount of weight in the same forward and aft position for the centre of gravity, um, but will leave room in the middle for the um, smoke generator, which I'll show you when that comes. Uh, now at the back we've got the speakers. Um, we need to put the speakers. I'm going to put them... Uh, I can't easily put a 50mm speaker because again there's not much depth in here. There's only about 25mm depth to put the speaker. I could put a speaker then, but it's... Um, uh, again, a lot, not a lot of room on either side of the, the back of the motor block. So again, I'm going to get two small speakers. They're an inch and a quarter. Speakers, I'll put one on each side. I'll have to make a speaker enclosure. Because there's no sound on this loco. There's no enclosure or anything. Make a box which would run across, across there uh, behind the firebox facing downwards, which, which is this direction, drill some holes in, in the floor to get the sound out and there'll be, there'll be room for that. Now where's the decoder going to go? I'm hoping there's room up here to, to fit the decoder. It's about 50mm uh, long by 25mm wide, so it should just fit running along there sitting upwards. Um, it could go between the smoke generator and the side tank but I don't think so because we've got a weight in there. That takes three or four mil off. I think it'll have to sit vertically 
inside there. Take these tabs off and there might be just room to sit vertically inside. The, you've got the, the height, the depth of this space. Once the, the floor goes back in, it's about 29 mil um, deep, this space. So not a lot of room, but should be just enough for the decoder as well there. And that, that will connect the six wire connections to the smoke generator. So that'll help. Otherwise I'll have to run back to the cab and to the um, and connect up to these wires as well. So when you, you have to take everything apart and look and see where things are going to fit. I was going to go for the large size smoke generator, um, but it's just a little bit too big for that. Um, it's a G-scale smoke generator, but if you're running a G-scale um, 464 or something, you might you might have space. But this is a, this is a small tank engine, so not enough room for that. So I've been conservative and got the small ESU smoke generator. I'm using ESU decoder because it's made in Germany and I thought it would be better for the German style, European style logos with the sound and, and so forth. And it's worked out okay for me previously, so I'm sticking with, with that. All right, so that's the inside. Um, that's the plan. And we'll see about um, what's the next step. And uh, we'll, we'll resume. As you've seen, I'm not showing you everything I've done. I'm not showing you as I do it. As if I showed you where I was soldering all these wires. And um, what I'm doing it would take just much too much. So I'm just summarising what are the issues, where things might fit, and what I've decided to do, which is my personal preference, and hopefully that gives you some options, or at least some background idea. Uh, just while we're looking at this, I will show. So we've got these two lights in here. I've got the, uh, the red and white LEDs. So the wires coming off them, they come back through the the back of the shell and I've got some white tack holding it in and then there's the three wires are soldered on and then um, curve around there. So what I've done, I've got the blue wire is the positive and which is the common for those two color lights. So that's, that's the blue and that will be the positive. And then I've got the green wire going to the uh, white uh, LED, the negative for the white, and the, the purple wire, just see it, it's a violet colour, goes to the red um, terminal for the LED. So I, by using the green or the purple, I can have the red or white light on there. And that's the same on the other side and at the rear. So when I wire those up to the decoder, which we'll see, I can use those to turn the lights on as required by direction. And I'm hopeful I can also even use uh, the ditch light feature to have a flashing light. And when I'm in the uh, uh, level crossing mode or shunting mode, I can activate that and the lights at each end, or these uh, side lights, they should alternate from red to white automatically. So uh, again, not a prototypical feature. It's a, copied from the American diesel ditch light feature. But might be a bit of fun. You don't have to have that and turn it off in the decoder. We'll see how that goes. Okay, that's all for now. I'll continue uh, shortly. Uh, just a couple of things I forgot to mention. 
uh, already. We're talking about the LEDs. All LEDs are, or well, most most ones that you buy like like this and a bear need a resistor because they won't take 12 or 18 volts they're normally only in the 2 or 3 volt range so you need a resistor uh, and I've used these little um, ones like this and you get in the different uh, values of resistance and in this case where I've got the um, two color uh, globes I found when I tried them out that I needed the same resistance for the red as for the white to get the brightness I wanted. So that made it convenient. That's about 8k ohms, 8000 ohms resistance needed. I, I found I needed. So I put the resistance in the blue wire, which is the positive, and that's common to both. So I just use one resistor for each globe in the blue wire, so there inside there that's the resistance is there inside the shrink wrap and that and I in fact doubled the resistance and I used the um, same resistor for the lights on both sides so I've got one resistor which does the red and white for the two globes at the front. Um, calculating the resistance I use the I look at the uh, the current recommended current for the for the each LED and the voltage and then I look at the voltage I'm going to supply the track power I'm using uh, 18 volts and so the power that the de decoder supplies to the um, function outputs is, is DC current but it is Basically, it's the same voltage that the of the track power. So I've got 18 volts um, on all these functions: the lights, um, the smoke, and so on. Uh, I mentioned track power. The track power is AC, but the function the decoder supplies DC to the functions. So you, and it's still about the same uh, voltage. Uh, yes. The, I mentioned the putting the smoke, taking the chimney out. So when you take the chimney out, if there's a nut in there. I said it was a square nut, but it's not. It's a hex nut, so don't be confused. And that sits in that hole there in the front of the under chassis. And the screw from the chimney comes down through it. And you, so you don't turn the nut, you turn the chimney to unscrew that. Uh, that's the switch for the smoke. Again, we won't need that because we'll be switching it from the decoder in this case. Uh, I didn't mention when the brass strips come down through the body, there's a brass piece which comes down and goes down that hole there, and the yellow wire which is still there. That's again the power for the uh, smoke, the old smoke unit, which is no longer needed, so that all comes off too. Another thing with this engine, and I, I did mention the, the uh, firebox before, but I was actually talking about the smoke box. So the smoke box on this engine does open the smoke box door, if I can do it with one hand. There we go. And behind there you have detail of the um, steam pipe, steam exhaust pipe and the, and the fire tubes and so forth. Nice little feature, though um, you don't normally see it of course. But remember that that detail takes up space inside the, um, inside the boiler there. So that's the back of the smoke box detail so that it's about a centimeter deep so uh, I hope I don't have to run wires through it or uh, drill holes in it but uh, hopefully I'll leave that there but I do have to get the wire from the headlight back down through there and that's not standard on any model there is a model with a headlight on it 
but in that case it's a dummy headlight and it doesn't have wiring. So this is a photo of the model with the dummy headlight, uh, a very early version of this logo. So I can't get that, I'll be using a real headlight, so we'll see how that works out. So we'll see how that goes. But I did mention the smoke box, that, sorry that's the smoke box, the fire box is down the other end. So hopefully everyone's not confused. So that's the end of part one, an hour's enough. I'll get the rest of it together and when I've finished it off, I'll put everything together and I'll put part two up. So hopefully you can stick around for that. Okay, cheers.